shameless copycat guns in history. Weapons manufacturing is the backbone of each country's defense system. Having a domestic defense industry provides a country with the capability of defending its territory and interests independently. Production of weapons, even if they're small arms, is an expensive and complex business, however. It takes a lot of time, expert knowledge, and money to design the weapon, test it, and finally put it into production. That's why many countries resort to the licensed production of firearms. It's far cheaper and more efficient to produce a weapon that another country has developed. It can, however, come at the price of political and diplomatic strain. It's not uncommon to find that some countries resort to unlicensed weapon production, usually by industrial espionage, and be used to make copycat weapons. Some of these weapons have only a couple of so-called borrowed features, while others are complete clones of the originals. The MP3008 From the offset of World War II, Germany was one of the few countries whose soldiers had been issued with submachine guns. These came from the vast arsenal of weapons that they managed to mass-produce during the build-up to hostilities, the main iconic one being the MP40. During the early stages of the war, Britain and her allies had absolutely nothing to match these new, light, rapid-firing weapons. So instead, they began to purchase thousands of US-made Thompson M1928 and later M1A1 submachine guns. This was still not enough to match the Germans, however. The solution was the Sten submachine gun, a simple design and, importantly, a low-production-cost weapon. Millions of Stens consisting of various versions were produced during and after the war. The weapon, over its period of use, developed a poor reputation and was regarded as being one of the least popular submachine guns of the time, only being accurate at very short ranges. The Sten, however, was successful in serving its purpose as a cheap and easily manufactured weapon to equip soldiers on a large scale. The tides of war continued changing as the war neared its end. Allied bombing crippled the German war industry, and it lost almost all of its momentum. As a result, in early 1945, its ability to keep the German war machine rolling was failing. The Germans therefore tried to create their own version of the Sten gun by producing a very similar type of weapon. It turned out that the German submachine guns became almost complete replicas of the Sten Mark II. The Germans got a hold of the British Sten Mark II submachine guns in the early stages of the war. They found the gun to be of poor quality and incomparable to the far superior MP40s. However, in 1945, the desperate situation began calling for desperate measures. The shortage of submachine guns became almost completely intolerable, and the value of this weapon, which could be mass-produced with little effort, was needed imminently as the weapon to equip the Volkssturm units, otherwise known as Germany's People's Militia. The result was a submachine gun model named the MP3008. German designers copied the British Sten Mark II almost down to the last detail. The only part that differed was the down-facing magazine stick of the MP38 and MP40 compared to the Sten's side-mounted magazine. In the last days of its production, the MP3008 also had its distinctive steel buttstock replaced with a wooden one. This was a result of the massive shortage of materials. The weapon was produced by the leading German arms manufacturers of Mauser, Hainel, and Walther, along with collaboration from others. No more than 10,000 copies of the weapon were made before the end of the war. However, the Mauser factory continued to produce a very similar version known as the Garat Potsdam, or the Potsdam device. This weapon was another clone of the Sten Mark II. In the end, neither of these submachine guns helped the Germans avoid total defeat in the war. In fact, it only revealed the true desperation the Germans felt in the last days of the war. The IMI Galil When a country's safety is at stake, all options are on the table, including copying weapons. During the Six-Day War, the Israelis discovered that their standard army-issue FNFALs performed poorly in the desert conditions, compared to the Egyptian Soviet-built AK-47s. Although often less precise, the AK-47 was a far more reliable and sturdy weapon. More importantly, it could withstand almost all types of conditions, and that was what the Israelis were looking for – great reliability. The end goal was to create an AK-47 version that could be as precise as an M16 or FNFAL. 
the government opened a competition for a new standard-issue assault rifle. Out of the several designs considered, the Israeli government ended up choosing a rifle designed by Yisrael Galil, a Palestinian inventor, and his colleague Yaakov Lior. Since the army was looking for a rifle similar to that of the AK-47, Galil and Lior resorted to copying the mechanism and the receiver design from another AK-47 copy, the Finnish RK-62 assault rifle. The Finns had based their design on a Polish license-built AK-47. This resulted in the production of a very high-quality weapon. The superior build quality was exactly the reason that the RK-62 caught the Israelis' attention. After thoroughly researching the Finnish rifle, Galil and Lior used it as a base for their design. The first Galil rifles to be manufactured had the actual receivers from the RK-62 built into them. The Galil platform contained a Kalashnikov pattern gas-driven piston system. The crucial difference was that the barrel was chambered for the NATO 556 by 45 mm round, unlike the RK-62, which fired 762 by 39 mm rounds. Using the 556 rounds produced a much higher operating pressure and therefore called for a change in the receiver design. Instead of using the stamped and riveted steel sheet metal receivers, Galil introduced a milled forge type. These improved the rifle's durability, but also increased its overall weight. Along with the standard AK-47 type fire selector switch on the right-hand side of the receiver, the Galil also had a thumb selector on the left face, just above the pistol grip. The tests, conducted in the late 1960s and early 1970s, acted as an assurance for the Israeli military that choosing the Galil rifle as the new standard-issue rifle was the right decision. Following this, the rifle began being produced by the government-owned Israeli military industries, hence the abbreviation IMI Galil. Starting from the mid-1970s and for almost two decades, the IMI Galil, the pride of the domestic defense industry, was the official service rifle of the Israeli Defense Forces. However, the events of the 1973 Yom Kippur War forced the Israelis to arm their soldiers with another rifle. Since the production of the Galil was slow and expensive, and the army needed a large number of rifles immediately, the government obtained 60,000 M16A1 assault rifles through the U.S. military aid program. Instead of the Galil, the Israeli soldiers were now armed with American-made M16A1s, which were often preferred by the majority of Israeli soldiers. Nevertheless, the Galil remained in service across all branches and was the weapon of choice of the Knesset Guard, the Israeli Protective Security Unit. Up until 1998, the IMI Galils continued to be manufactured in three basic configurations. The Automatic Rifle Machine Gun, or ARM for short, the Automatic Rifle, or AR, and the Short Automatic Rifle, or SAR. IMI Galils were used in all three versions by military and police forces worldwide. The rifle was also licensed manufactured in Italy, South Africa, Sweden, and Myanmar, which was formerly known as Burma. Listen up, maggots. If you don't want someone copying your identity like the Chinese military copied the Americans' guns, then try NordVPN, a safer way to browse. Turn on threat protection from NordVPN's app settings for a completely secure online experience and 100% data anonymity. Using threat protection ensures all your information is transmitted through an encrypted data tunnel to shield your identity and block trackers, maliciously intrusive ads, harmful websites, and the German army trying to steal the Sten Mark II design. Available to use on up to six devices at once, there's no need to sacrifice speed or responsiveness using NordVPN. Keep your blueprints under lock and key while also overcoming any content blocks in your country. No matter where you are with NordVPN, you can view your favorite website, videos, copycat guns, or history channel. Subscribe today using the link in the description below and get an exclusive discount on NordVPN's two-year plan and access to their free anti-malware. Dismissed! The Type 36 During World War II, the United States Lend-Lease Program led to the American-manufactured weapons being widely used in numerous conflicts all across the globe. For example, American guns were used by Allied troops as well as by guerrillas in the Balkans, as well as by troops of the Kuomintang in China. As part of this program, nationalist Chinese forces received large quantities of the U.S. M3 and M3A1 grease gun submachine guns. 
When the war ended and the Lend-Lease program ceased, the import of these firearms to the country was reduced significantly. However, the nationalist Chinese forces were still in need of weapons because of the domestic hostilities between the nationalists and the communists, which raged for another four years after World War II had ended. After the communists had eventually gained the upper hand by utilizing large amounts of weapons abandoned by the Japanese after the Second World War, the nationalists tried to match their strength by increasing their own arms production. For this purpose, the nationalist-controlled Shenyang Arsenal near Mukden began production of grease gun copies. The submachine gun, which was a near-exact copy of the M3A1, was designated the Type 36. The name came about because they adopted it in the year 1947, otherwise known as the 36th year of the Chinese Republic calendar, which started in 1912, the year when the Republic of China was founded. Although the Type 36 used the same 45 ACP ammunition and differed from the M3A1 only by a different barrel nut and the lack of an oil container inside the pistol grip, most parts were not interchangeable. Despite being a very close copy of the grease gun platform, the Type 36 was a comparably low-quality weapon. Although a seemingly simple weapon, the grease gun required a complicated manufacturing process involving large stamping machines, something the Chinese did not have at the time. Still, the fact that the Shenyang Arms Company lacked the proper machinery did not stop the nationalists from producing around 10,000 copies of the Type 36. The Type 37 was introduced the following year, this time chambered for 9mm parabellum rounds. In 1949, when the Communists gained control of mainland China, the Nationalists were forced to move the entire production line from the Shenyang Arsenal to Formosa, the island which is now known as Taiwan. There, they continued the production of the Type 37 under its new designation, the Type 39. During the hostilities, the Communist forces captured a significant amount of the Type 36s and Type 37s. They later used these weapons against the Americans in Korea and Vietnam. The Norinco CQ-311 The Chinese did not stop copying American weapons with the Type 36 grease gun clone. In fact, the act of copying weapons has continued in the country right up until the present day. One of the most blatant examples of a Chinese copy is the CQ-311, a 5.56mm caliber assault rifle manufactured by the notorious Norinco company. The CQ-311, or the CQ-M-311, was introduced in the early 1980s and is a direct clone of Colt's AR-15 platform, more specifically the M-16 series of rifles. Like the original, the CQ-311 is also produced in two versions, the military version with selective fire and the semi-automatic version for the civilian market, designated the CQ-311-1. Although a direct copy of the American M-16, the CQ-311 has several minor differences, the most recognizable being the curved hand grip. Apart from that, the CQ-311 also has a different forestock and foresight. What can't be seen, though, is the difference in the quality of the materials used. While Colt uses T70-74 aluminum in the manufacturing process, Dorinco uses T60-60 aluminum, which uses metal injection molding rather than the arguably superior forging technique the American company uses. The clone CQ-311 has the same barrel as the original M16, with a length of 19.9 inches or 508 millimeters, as well as a 1 in 12 rifling twist, which allows it to fire the same type of ammunition, the 5.56 mm ball M193 NATO cartridge. Along with this, Norinco has also cloned the ammo and designated it the Type CJ cartridge. The civilian version uses the 223 Remington commercial cartridge. In 2006, Norinco introduced a carbine version, the CQ-311 Type A. Needless to say, the carbine was also a clone of the American M4A1 assault carbine. Despite being a state-owned defense corporation, Norinco's CQ-311 assault rifles are produced for export only. Not a single copy has been issued to the Chinese armed forces. However, armies and police forces worldwide, mainly in Africa and Asia, have the CQ-311 in their armaments, primarily because of the low cost of the weapon. The commercial version was also sold in the United States and Canada, but was later prohibited in 1989 and 2020, respectively. However, this version can still be bought in Italy, Ukraine, and South Africa. Although a lesser quality weapon, the CQ-311 remains in competition with the American manufacturers, primarily because of its significantly lower cost than the real thing. 
the M53 machine gun. Straightforward cloning is almost always performed in a manner known as reverse engineering. This process involves deconstructing the target weapon into individual components to extract design information. Once obtained, the data is merged into technical documentation needed to manufacture the clone. After World War II ended, Yugoslav engineers from the Cervena Zastavar factory used this method to make a copy of the notorious German MG42 machine gun, which they called the M53. Being one of the best machine guns of the war, the MG42 was used extensively in the post-war years as a model for licensed and unlicensed production. Other manufacturers directly copied parts of its mechanism in the designing of new types of machine guns. The Yugoslavs took advantage of the fact that the Germans had occupied the country during the war and that hundreds of MG42s were left behind by the occupying troops. The captured guns were issued to the newly formed Yugoslav People's Army, whose leaders decided to make the MG42 the standard issue machine gun. Since there was no way of purchasing it from the Germans, the Yugoslavs had to make their own copies. Even though they had original examples at their disposal and probably had access to the original technical documentation provided by the Soviets, creating a clone weapon remained a difficult task. The main problem was the standard Yugoslav 7.9mm cartridge, the Ball M49. Even though it was the same caliber as the 7.92 by 57mm Mauser cartridge that the MG42 used, the M49 had a somewhat heavier bullet which produced frequent jams, as well as broken shell casings and other weapon parts. The Yugoslav engineers approached Rheinmetall for help, but were turned down by the Germans, who didn't want to take part in the reverse engineering of their own design. Eventually, one of the Yugoslav engineers approached Professor Werner Gruner at the Dresden Institute of Mechanical Engineering, the original designer of the MG42. Gruner obliged and offered his assistance. Thanks to his help, the Yugoslavs solved the problems of shortening the length of the recoil spring and thus reducing the rate of fire. In 1953, Rheinmetall sued the Yugoslavs at the International Court of Justice in The Hague for violating their patent rights. The Yugoslavs won the case, however, by claiming that the patents were part of Germany's post-war indemnities. The Yugoslavs ultimately produced over 40,000 copies of the M53 before the Soviet PKM General Purpose Machine Gun later replaced it. In the world of weapons manufacturing, copying is a common occurrence. Most often, it comes as a part of various license agreements. There are examples, however, when manufacturers resort to illegal methods of obtaining technical documentation for the weapons they wish to create. The result is often a blatant, shameful ripoff of the original.